Welcome back to another War Tales video. Alright, so this video is going to focus on uh, seven tips for how to make your mercenary company highly effective, or seven habits of highly effective mercenaries. Um, I'm going to kind of go through them, and I'm really skipping from like tip to tip pretty quickly here, so hopefully it's not going not gonna to take too long to go through them all for you. Alright, so tip number one that we're going to look at is uh, rat's nest. So in a couple of my videos I've mentioned that you want to leave rat nests till kind of right towards the end. Um, the reason for this is that the broodmother drops um, an item called uh, the brain, the infected brain. You use that to buy alchemical recipes. The other element is that these infected outgrowths drop special materials that you need to craft particular items as well. So what I'm going to do is I will complete this fight um, off screen, I'll jump back in once the fight's done, I'll show you the ingredients that you get after you kill a couple of the outgrowths, I'm probably only going to aim for two or so for this video just to make it a little bit quicker, uh, and then um, I'll show you how to craft some potions as well. Back in a minute. Okay, and even though a few seconds have passed for you, a few minutes have for me. Um, we have won the fight against the um, Broodmother, we only killed nine rats and um, two infested growths. I was just trying to keep it pretty quick, uh, and we pretty much got that done on turn number one. So for killing each of the outgrowths, we get these plague-infected outgrowth samples, and for killing the matriarch, we get the infected brain. Uh, make sure you do loot those as you go. They are in limited supply in the demo because rats' nests do not respawn. So you've really got to make sure that you make the most out of each of the rats' nests, and uh, in the world map, they, they look a little bit like this. Anyway, that is a uh, just a tip on how to get those different materials, and we will move on to crafting potions in a minute. And here we are at the Alchemist now with our uh, freshly, freshly acquired uh, rat brains and outgrowth samples. So when you talk to the Alchemists in each town, they'll have a couple of different uh, recipes available, and you can see that you can buy them for that one brain. You can also steal them, and they're actually not a bad target to steal. They do push your wanted or suspicion level up quite high, um, but overall, because there's only a limited number of brains, it's not too bad to, to steal them if you get a chance. All right, by spending the brain, you get the recipe. We can simply right-click and, uh, and learn that one. Uh, you do have to leave the shop before you can do so, and we shall learn fortifying oil. Now, one of the main things that you need for all of the oils is a thing called Pristine Essence. Uh, and you can learn and craft Pristine Essence up there. And it's the one that uh, requires the outgrowth samples. So we'll head in, uh, let's grab a couple of Pristine Essences as the first thing we're going to create. And then let's have a look at uh, which of the oils we can create. So we just learnt Fortifying Oil. Um, they do take some kind of random ingredients at different times, so lots of different plants, coal from the blacksmith, marsh par parsley from uh, roaming around in infected blood, even from different purifiers and, um, and infected around the place. Okay, so once we prepare our fortifying oil, on the first craft of most alchemy recipes, you get a bonus. And what the bonus does is allow you uh, to learn a new recipe, which is called a concentrate. So we just built Fortifying Oil, just crafted, and now we've learnt Fortifying Oil Concentrate, which gives the oil an additional 30% chance of applying its effects, which is really, really good. So we'll craft that as well. Now, one thing about uh, crafting the, um, the concentrates is that it actually consumes one of the oils that you have created. So we actually no longer have, or unless I actually had crafted a couple of the Fortifying Oils, um, we would no longer have that available, and um, we would just be needing to create another one. Now, I'm having a quick look. I've got fortifying oil still, but I don't seem to have the concentrate. Oh, that's right, because I've just learnt the recipe. That's all I've done. Okay, so when you actually go back into your apothecary table and go to craft it, it does consume one of the fortifying oils. So what you'd want to do is, first of all... Um, craft two of the oils that you're after and then the belt for one as well all right so now we have a fortifying oil and a fortifying oil concentrate so between the two of those what you can do now every time a skill deals damage has a 20 percent chance to reduce damage taken so this is obviously a good one to um have on a tank 
Uh, I've got three skills that can deal damage on this guy, so if any of these three skills hit, he will get a damage reduction. And I have no uh, no oil on this weapon yet at all. So I can apply this wet oil, and you'll see the little dot at the bottom there now. And that oil stays there permanently, so nothing takes it off. Doesn't matter how many times I use it or it procs, that oil stays there. I can then also apply the oil concentrate, and now he has a 50% chance every single attack of applying um, the fortifying oil and reducing his damage taken for three rounds. So greatly improved um, durability there. Just having a quick look to see if I've put oils on any of my other characters, and I like having that little dot down the bottom so it shows me very, very quickly and easily which ones I do and don't have oil on already. Uh, and so he's the only character with oil on his uh, weapon so far. And that is applying oils. Okay, so next tip is blacksmithing. What we're going to try to do is actually complete um, a superior quality item. So you might have seen um, an achievement for this within Steam. And basically with blacksmithing, what you're aiming to do is uh, get a craft that instead of just giving you the basic two stars, gives you three stars. Uh, it is down to a lot of random luck with crafting like this. So you do need to craft quite a few things. And what you're aiming to do is hit... Uh, all four plates so that they're gold, unlike what I'm about to do here. And if you get all four plates so that they're gold, you have a chance of it becoming three star. Hitting as few plates as I did there, you either get a zero or one star piece of equipment. So the benefit of hitting uh, all the plates is that you end up getting more armor layers on the equipment. And that's really good because it means you can pop more armor layers in there and you'll, um, you'll do a little bit better. All right, and here we go. So here we have completed a superior quality item. So we've got some three star rags and they now have the one, two and three armor layers available, which is exactly what we were after. Uh, and that is how you craft a superior quality item. All right, next tip. Uh, next tip that we're gonna look at is armor layers. So to get armor layers, you will normally come to a uh, tracker's camp. Um, tracker's camps you can find in Tiltron, in Vertrus, and down in southwestern um, Kors uh, Arthas as well. Um, at these trackers camps, you will find a character usually sitting on the ground or out the back somewhere who you can talk to, and they will actually sell uh, the patterns on how to learn and make armor layers. Now, I've stolen or bought all of the ones of this guy, so he currently doesn't have any, but they work similar to any other recipe where you get it in your backpack, you can see it there, you right-click, and you will learn... Um, an armor layer recipe. Now, once you do learn them, you craft armor layers in the blacksmith, and they'll look like this. So the defender's reinforced layer, hunter's reinforced layer, or sages. And there are two different tiers. So there are six kind of tier one armor layers and another, uh, I think, five tier two layers. Um, this one's actually a, a separate weapon, not another layer. Um, the stronger ones have uh, a number of stats on them or higher bonuses. So Reinforced Layer of the Fox, obviously, plus two movement versus Sages, which is plus one. You do need to have white leather, which you obtain from ghost packs to craft all the tier two ones, but they are very nice. Now, once you've gone to the blacksmith, you've made them. They sit in your backpack like this, so they don't get applied to armor automatically. And then what you need to do is you need to find a companion that has some armor slots on it or armor layer slots. So at the moment, I don't think I've got any companions with kind of um, free slots as such. Um, I think all my, my slots are full. Um, but once you've got them in there, what you can actually do is you basically would just right click this and it would, would go in there. So you can remove them. Um, so I could shift right click to remove the two armor layers. They do get destroyed in the process, uh, at least in the early stages of the game though. Once you equip them, you'll get to see that bonus on there. So each of those hunters provides plus two dexterity. So you can see overall the armor provides 24 armor, two movement, and four dexterity. And that is a wrap for armor layers. And the next tip we have is on uh, the starting skills. So when you reach level four in the crime and chaos path here, you get access to the black market and its agents. This is a pretty common question that's been popping up on Discord. And what you're looking for is in any of the bandit camps uh, within the, the different regions, these bandits lair, 
Once you enter the lair and you're at level 4 on the crime path, there will be a character there that is a black market agent. Once you click on them, and there is a slight visual bug here in that it just focuses on the uh, the wrong person, instead it hits the uh, the dead guy on the ground, not the black market agent, but once you talk to him, you'll see that you've got manual skill books that you can learn. So these have all of the starting skills, aim, sprint, first aid, taunt, and wrath. Um, these books are absolutely fantastic. 150 gold per book is actually a very cheap price to give you the flexibility. And you can see what I do on different characters is I try to give them everything. Aim, first aid, sprint, wrath, and taunt even. I've got taunt on an archer. I don't know why, just because I can. Uh, and you can see that characters aren't limited to the number of skills that they get to start with. So if you exceed that limit of six, you do end up just getting more and more added in. Uh, to use these skill books, you just right click on it to buy it. It'll uh, appear in your inventory. You can then go to the character that you want to apply it to. Um, just have them open on this character screen here. When you right click aim, that character will then have that skill. So pretty straightforward in the end. Uh, and that is starting skill books wrapped up. Okay, after moving on from the starting skills, uh, the next thing that I was going to look at were the class skills. So over here in uh, Vertruce province, uh, so up near Smots Arena, uh, this is where you actually obtain all of the, the class skill books, or most of them anyway. Over in the little uh, grove just to the north of Smots Arena, you will actually find a secret, so sort of just near where I've placed my baton there, uh, and you will find one skill book in there, and there's one other skill book hidden around in this province as well. Other than the ones you can find for free in barrels though, you first have to uh, win the arena and defeat all of the um, contestants and Smot himself to get the Dagger Viper. And that unlocks uh, Huganor and his shop. Huganor, I'd never looked at his name before, there you go. Uh, in his shop, uh, generally the only thing he sells are the Skill Mastery books at 300 gold a pop. Uh, you can see I stock up on them a fair bit because I really love these Skill Mastery books and they're very, very nice uh, for improving your character's skills. Uh, to apply skill mastery books, they do not, do not work on starting skills, main attacks, or level 2 um, uh, kind of valor point generator skills either. Uh, they also do not work on the brutes level um, level 3 skills. I've actually taken that guy at a different time. Uh, this game was created a bit early, so normally these would be at level 2, these would be at level 3, and you can't do those ones either. Okay, so to get one of the ones that you do actually want, uh, you select the the main um, profession that they want, it'll add their skill to this page here, you just mouse over it and you can see the unupgraded skill, the upgraded skill, and what other benefits and buffs it gives you. If I right click on it from there, it will prompt me that I get to use my skill mastery to upgrade the skill, which I will do, and then Relentless Charge has been upgraded. Uh, they can only be upgraded a single time, and they can be quite quite strong if you if you upgrade them so i'm a i'm a big fan of these ones uh for sure um that is pretty much skill mastery books complete you can only use two skill books per character so it doesn't cost too much to get their their skills upgraded to that highest level which is great okay and here we go with our final tip of the video heading up towards the tomb of arthas or the ruin of arthas Ooh, excuse me there. Okay, so to get to the tomb, you actually have to head up this little embankment, which looks unclimbable, but if you uh, if you just click up the top there, it will send you all the way up, which is a great little secret. Uh, I kind of look forward to more little things like that. I mean, if you look on top of this mountain, there's a whole lot of unexplored region. Um, I actually ran around all these cliffs trying to see if there was a shortcut up, but alas, there is not just yet. Okay, so once you make your way to the Ruin of Arthas, um, I would recommend in terms of preparation for going into the, ru the ruins, um, you're carrying at least 30 torches in your, um, or 30 light uh, worth in your bags. I've got one torch in my bag and then a bunch on my characters as well. Um, so I think I've got four characters equipped with torches heading in. Um, so there are some nice little tutorials now. You do need torches to explore, and if you run out, you will die having to explore again from the beginning. There is a little uh, rogue in here who you can provide some medicine to to uh, help out. 
she does give you some extra torches to, to roam around as well. As you can see, when you mouse around, you do get to see lit up little areas, and this comes in handy later. Now, I've already cleared the tomb, um, so you know, you're not going to see the whole thing. But the couple of key tips within the tomb here are that one of the things that you're looking for are these little symbols. So there's one symbol as you head in past that first area. Another symbol as you're in the puzzle room over here. So this symbol is on the wall, and you will want to minimize your companion's thing for that. And there's a third symbol on the ground uh, in this room with the other dead body over here. So once you have all three of those symbols, uh, we want to proceed cautiously and use a little bit of extra light. I'm kind of hoping we don't get attacked here because I have already cleared it all out. You actually go over here and use your scholar to input the symbols in the correct order. And that'll open the door up here for them as well. Um, one little thing with the ruins, if you do knock this bucket over, a little uh, homage to Lord of the Rings there, uh, it will call forth another fight that you will have to uh, continue with after that. Now unlocking that door really just opens up a shortcut to get back to this main area um, where the chest is, and you want to loot this towards the end. Um, and I think you get the key for this chest off one of the characters in there. So that is a... A very quick overview of the tomb. Um, the the character that you, you have that comes with you, she's meant to um, inspect the dead bodies, but I think I didn't have her with me the first time I did it, and now I can't interact with them anymore, so I'm pretty sure she will just stick with me now. Um, the other secret from the tomb, so this is what the, the puzzle is meant to look like when it's finished. And... There is one more little secret in here. Once you do come in here, you should inspect the mosaic on the wall over here, or the art on the wall, and there will be another little symbol that you'll have to mouse over and hold your mouse there for a little while, and you'll discover that as well. Those two symbols contribute to the ninth uh, fairly hidden profession, because not many people kind of get, I guess, that far into the game, where you need to unlock these runes, which gives you a little a uh, bit of extra story. So it's not a profession you can assign to anyone, but you, yeah, you do get to read a little bit more. Um, this particular one is the Warriors Codex is actually around the Legendary Shield, which I'm excited to see more about. Um, I've read, I think, the 1, 2, and 3 Codex in, in other save files. All right, well, that wraps up our seven tips for a highly effective mercenary company today. I hope you enjoyed them. And that is CAG over and out.